In this video, we will get started with Thermal Floor Planner in ADS. It's a very nice utility inside ADS which helps people to do thermal simulations without having to have a circuit simulation done or a schematic design. Once you have a thermal technology file for the process you are willing to use, you can assign the power dissipating components, solve the thermal equations and look at the temperature profile of the chip. This technology is very useful for two scenarios. Majorly early on in the design process to gain insight into heat coupling and dissipation criteria of various device layouts. You can use this tool very effectively to plan the power consuming devices placement in your chip design and also design and decide on how many finger devices you would like to use and what will be the impact on each of those into the overall temperature profile. You can also use this feature later in your design process once you have the full design layouts. But in that case, it could be a little tedious because the number of components could be very large. And in this case, running full closed loop electrothermal simulation in ADS would be a lot more preferable. But as a matter of principle, it is possible. Now here, let's go take a deep dive into understanding how all this can be done. In this layout, I have marked the chip area, uh, which is 100,000 uh, micron by 600 micron at the moment. And I would like to plan, um, you know, where to place my power consuming devices like BJT, FETs, HBTs, or, you know, how many fingers I should be using my circuit design so that I can come out with a proper recommendation for circuit designers. Now to get started, you can go to tools thermal floor planner look at the setup and then here you can notice i'm using a pdk which ships with ads and it's called demo kit non-linear and if i browse to that folder of the pdk inside the thermal directory i have tech.tcl which is the thermal technology file by linking that file we have now access to all the thermal properties of the materials in used in the stack up we can go ahead and set up the boundary condition which we would like, set up the ambient temperature and certain machine criteria. If you leave these fields blank, the simulator will use the default numbers as specified and largely those are fine to get started. Once you have the basic setup done, let's go ahead and add heat sources. And here you can call your device with any name you want like BJT, HBT, uh, FET and so on. Define the power dissipation either in terms of power or with current and voltage which you want to feed to the device and the tool behind the scene will calculate the power based on this information. Here depending on the device type you are using you can select which is the heat layer which is going to be active. In this case let me use heat M2 layer and then we can define our heat array. So in this case I would like to model it as one column and two rows which is basically going to model a two finger device and i can define the width of that finger to be 100 micron length to be 15 micron as indicated in this picture here let me place that in the center of my chip now you can see i have a device placed in the center now to mark these four extreme extents i can also create a new uh, heat source with zero watt value so that it won't dissipate any power. Define the column and rows as one and I'm going to use 10 micron by 15 micron and place those items near to the extents of the chip. This is only to make sure the thermal simulator knows the extents where the temperature is flown. Now once it is done, let's cancel this dialog and now we are ready to calculate the temperature. We can solve for temperature either in the foreground or in the background. Now here I'm going to go ahead and use it in the foreground. Now all the information for thermal technology file is going to be read. Thermal simulation is performed and you can look at the temperature result. And here you can see 2 watt is getting consumed in two finger device. So each of the finger is consuming 1 watt 
and the overall temperature you can see is reaching 244 degrees centigrade which again by any standard is pretty big now how to cool down you know the temperature distribution of the chip well one of the easiest way of doing so when i have a two watt consuming you know device instead of you know assigning one watt in each finger we can split the power and make it like a four finger device something like this so that each of these fingers is only consuming half watt so obviously it will heat a little lesser so let's go ahead and solve for temperature and see whether the fundamentals which we know from textbooks is really uh, true or not and indeed you can see now the temperature is much lower and it has reached to 146 degrees centigrade now if you want to bring it um, you know down even more you can come up with proper strategy of either providing a thermal vm to the ground so that the heat can be conducted away you know as quickly as you want so that the temperature rise is not that much or splitting it even in more fingers now with this information let's go ahead and close and now what if i want to have more power devices i would like to understand the impact of these so for example here i'm going to place three devices in parallel which is very common in power amplifier cases where parallel devices are used to increase the overall wattage here each of these devices could be one watt just an example so i'm going to go ahead and assign one watt to each of these four finger devices so that now i have four transistors on my chip layout now with this configuration we can go ahead to tools thermal flow planner and solve it for temperature again as you can see we have been able to turn around very quickly understanding the thermal profile of our chip and under the interaction between these you know fingers and how thermal properties could be coupled between the devices here by looking at this picture you can notice one interesting thing the last finger of the first fret is kind of interacting with the first finger of second fret now although it's not very clear but at least you get an you know idea here by looking at surface plot you can see all the you know temperature peaks in each of these fingers and how they are coupling now by activating the slicer let me slice up and reach to the back devices in here you can see indeed these two fingers of the parallel devices are thermally coupled and this may or may not be a very good thing to have so in case you want to avoid thermal coupling the logical thing to do is increase the separation between those two devices so that heat has a chance to get dissipated before it reaches the next device layout all these deeper insight level information about the thermal profile of the chip is now available in your fingertips when you use thermal floor planner in areas as you can see also it's very straightforward to run you really don't need a whole lot of complicated design to make some early decisions on how the circuit configuration will look like, what kind of device configuration you will use, and where eventually you will end up placing those devices in your chip layout so that you can achieve minimum of temperature rise and reduce the thermal peaks. So that's all for this video. I hope the information presented here would be useful for your design work. So thanks a lot for your attention and wish you all the best for your design work.